So it is two o'clock on the dot here on the West Coast in California. So I want to welcome everybody here to the Miley Photos Coffee Break. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Angela Andrew. I'm a product evangelist for Milio. And my goal is to help you all be successful with the software and make sure you are getting everything you can out of it that you want to get out of it. So today we're going to jump into Photo Explorer, which is a fun and sometimes overlooked feature that we added uh, a couple of releases back. It's somewhat new. So let me jump in to share my screen and I will walk you through how to use it. All right, so what I have up on the screen here is an image that I captured with my mobile phone. And because I captured this with my mobile phone, it has built-in GPS information, which unless you've gone in and specifically disabled this on your phone, it's probably doing automatically. What that does is allow you in Mylia Photos to be able to see that on the map. If you go down to this places section down here, you can see it on a little map. You can get the actual GPS coordinates of where it was shot. And that information is actually really valuable and can lead us to other fun things in the program. So we decided to make that a little bit more accessible and a little bit more fun. So we added this badge here up in the upper right corner of a photo. So when you're in single photo view, which means you're taking a look at the big, the big photo, not just in the grid, you'll have this little badge. Now, the first thing I wanted to uh, let you know is if you're not seeing this badge, you might have disabled it. So you can go up here to the more menu and you can turn on or off show photo explorer. And that's going to make that little shortcut visible or invisible. And you can tailor that to your taste. And if you go ahead and click on that icon, it brings up a couple of options. The first one is to explore a location on the map. And what that does is it brings it up in map view and zooms you in right on that specific spot, which is really nice and really convenient and a very cool way to navigate through these things. But I'm going to jump back to my album here. And we're going to go down and say explore location on the web. So this is where we can actually start to get into some really interesting and helpful information with a photo by exploring this on the web. When you launch this the first time, you'll be asked to pick your favorite map application. I have mine set to Google Photos right now, but if you want to go in, you can go into settings. And I believe it's under general. Scroll down to the bottom and you can choose your preferred map provider. Um, when I'm driving, I actually prefer Apple Maps, but for doing these types of searches where I want to get more information about a location and about a photo, I find that Google Maps is actually the better one. It gives a broader scope of information. So it's up to you. You can choose whichever one you want. And the services that are built into each of those particular map options does vary. So I'm going to go ahead and show you with Google Maps. Go ahead and clear here out of my settings. And we're going to go show this, explore this location on the web. And that's going to pull up a web browser for me. So let me grab that from my other screen here and drag this over. And what this does is you can see here's that map overlay, and it's showing me that exact same place that it was in the map inside of my Leo photos, which is great. From here, I can even jump in and go to Street View. Let's go ahead and do that. Come on. I would have to actually drag the little dude on there. So I can drag that guy on there. And it jumps me to Street View. So if you go back to that picture that I took in Milio, that is exactly where I am. And from this point, I can pan around and get a sense of the entire landscape of where I was. And I assure you, I wasn't standing in the middle of the road when I took that picture. I was here off in the bicycle lane. I was actually on a bike ride when I took that photograph. But I can pan around and see what all is going on in this photo. And if there's any other shots that I might want to go back and get at another time. So this is really cool for landscape photographers because it can help you plan future shoots. And I'm going to show you a few ways to do that here in a few minutes. But for now, what I want to do is jump back over here to Mylio and pick a more common scenario. So this is a meal that my husband and I had last Friday night. Absolutely delicious, by the way. And let's say I'm scrolling through my photos and I come across this image, or maybe I just use the quick filters to find my food photos because I know I ate something yummy at some point and I want to find out where it was. So I stumble upon this photo and I want to find out where it was that I ate. Maybe I want to get directions to that restaurant. Maybe I want to make a reservation. We can do that all using Photo Explorer. So I'm going to jump up here to the Photo Explorer icon and choose to explore that location on the web. And there it goes and it jumps me right in to where that's located. I can then zoom in a little bit and go, there it is, Aromi Italian Cuisine. That's the restaurant we ate at. Perfect. Let me go ahead and click on that. And I can then go over here and I can click to get directions. 
I can reserve a table, I can put in an order online, or I can even get more information about the business. So I can go down here and take a look at the menu. That opens up their website and I can get tons of information. So I can go here to menus and find that exact dish that I have that picture of and make sure it's still in their menu so I can order it again. So those are some really fun ways to interact with this information and navigate using Photo Explorer. And this works really, really well on your mobile phones as well. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna pull up my cell phone and show you what this looks like doing this inside of um, a mobile device. So let me go ahead and minimize that down. And now you see that I have Milo Photos pulled up on my phone. That's this piece here in the middle. And I can go in here again to this same picture, tap that Photo Explorer button, explore on the web, and that's gonna pull me in right to that same location. If I'm out and about from this, I can pull up that exact same place. So I can zoom in. There's the restaurant, Aromi Italian Cuisine. And I can jump in there and get directions so I can go back. I can even go down. I can make the reservation so I know that I want to go maybe next Friday night for our date night. It's a great way to get additional information and use and have fun with your photos. So that's really, really cool. Another thing that I would love to show you is using Photo Explorer to plan additional photo shoots. So I have a couple of other applications that I like to use for planning, but you can do this with your web browser and go into exploring the web using the Photo Explorer tool. But I'm gonna show you kind of, kind of step two of this. You can go ahead and move up your finger from the bottom to get to your info panel. That's a quick shortcut there. And then scroll down and actually grab those GPS coordinates. So I'm gonna just double tap there, copy. And then I can go to any application and get more information. So as a landscape and travel photographer, one of the things that I like to do before I go on a trip is take a look at some different locations and figure out what time's the sunset, what time is sunrise, where is the sun going to be hitting at a certain time, or where is the moon or the sunset hitting? One of my favorite apps for this is called the Photographer's Ephemeris. And I can go in here and I can go to search and I can paste in those coordinates. Search that up, grab those, and then I can go in and see exactly that location that I was shooting from when I was on my bicycle. Maybe I want to go back there with my big camera and take a look at maybe shooting at sunrise, getting the sun coming up over those hills. So if you remember when we were in, let's see if I can get back here. I might have to go to my screen sharing to show you. But when you panned around, there were mountains in the background over those vineyards. So I could get the sun popping up over those mountains, maybe even get a beautiful starburst right there. I could just plan this and know that if it was today, I would have needed to be there a little before 5.53 a.m. to get that shot. Similarly, if I want to go the other direction and get the sun setting over the mountains in the other direction, I would need to be out there at about 8.21. So this tells me a bunch of information about my photos and where I can go to plan a specific shot and get something really deliberate and really awesome. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna stop sharing my screen right there. If I wanted to go back with that planning tool and shoot towards the sunrise and get the sunburst right over this mountain, I can sit here with between Google Earth and Street View and be able to see exactly where I wanna position myself, maybe move over a little bit to get a specific line of sight and maybe get the sun peeking right through those two right there, you can adjust and you can make those plans using the information you have in your Milo Photos library in conjunction with Photo Explorer. So Photo Explorer, like I said, it's a tiny tool that a lot of people overlook, but it's a lot of fun and it can be very, very useful. So that's all I have for you today on Photo Explorer. I hope that was helpful and enjoyable and that you find some unique ways to use this and get more out of your images and get out there and enjoy the world. So with that, I wanna open up the floor to questions and see what we've got going on. Darren, do you wanna talk about uh, this awesome feature? <laughs> you made a really nice <laughs> comment. Maybe yeah, I'd love to know. see how Darren used it. Oh, right, yeah, I've actually, while you were talking, I just opened up my app and um, I took some photos obviously yesterday when I was scouting for some locations for next week. Um, I went on straight onto there and I was able to pop up the, the image images I took, also um, altering the perspective so I could look north east 
um, to make sure that I'm going to be able to pick Matariki when it comes over the horizon. So thank awesome. you. I had not, I've seen that little logo, that little badge, didn't know what it was for, didn't yeah, play with really it. Yeah, it's a really easy one to miss. <laughs> it is, yeah. No, thank you. It's fantastic. I really appreciate it. No problem. And I just put a link into the chat for the Photographer's Ephemeris. That's the iPhone app that I was using. They also have a website. Um, there is a nominal fee for that app. We're not associated with them in any way. It's just an app that I know and I love. Um, another one that's great for planning your photo trips is Photo Pills and Plan It. Those are mm. other good ones. Lori, do you have a favorite? You know, uh, it's been a while. I don't remember which one I use, but I do remember using an app on my iPhone specifically to get the sunrise sunset. It's probably one of those that you mentioned. All right, cool. Yeah. Harold, you've got your hand up. Yeah, I I was following you and I was looking at my layout and I'm in settings and I don't see where it says show photo explorer. So it's not going to be actually in settings. It's just going to be here in the more menu. And it is right here at the top level. You don't have to go into settings. And it's only going to show that badge when a picture has GPS. Oh, so if you okay. shot that with a camera that doesn't have that, it's not going to be there. But what you can do is if you know a, an approximate location, you can always add GPS information. So let me show you how to do that really quick. And then you'll have the badge there. It's not going to be quite as precise without exact coordinates. It. But it's no, still I, I couldn't easy. figure out where it was on the menu, but that... I wasn't yeah, no showing worries. a picture. So let me go ahead and jump here to my all photos. I already went through and I tagged these. These were taken with um, my big camera, which I don't have GPS turned on in there. But what you can do is you can go here to the map view. And I know this was captured at Santee Lakes. And I can go ahead and search for that. And it should pull me in right into that part. So Santee Lakes, California. Let me just do this to Santee. Well, it should. I think it's being a little bit slow because I'm also streaming the video right now. So my apologies. But then what you can do is it'll zoom you in right on what you search for. And then you can take that picture and physically just drag it onto the map. And that's going to add GPS coordinates for you as well. So this that's is Matt, I have some that. questions about this specific workflow whenever you're ready. Sure, go for it. So first question is whenever you're searching, where I found that sometimes I'm not able to find what I would expect to find, like because I'm probably too used to searching Google and it's got a, everything. So what database am I actually searching when I type anything into that box? Am I able to type businesses and then what, what limitations are there? So um, I have to check with our developers to see which map service we're using. Um, I know it's not Apple or Google, it's a different map application. Um, Usually it it's like open, quite open. a lot of things in there, but it doesn't have everything. Okay. So yeah, if we're able to find that out, that would help me because then I can go do a little bit more research on the limitations of that service. I think of the course. usual map service I'm, I'm used to seeing, it's called like open street view or open, open maps, open something. I think that might be the one we're using. That is what comes okay. to mind, but I don't, don't take that as gospel. <laughs> okay, no worries. And then it, it took me a while to realize that you have to drag and drop and then you can refine and then you have to hit the check mark to actually drop it, um, what is the most efficient way of doing a lot of photos at once? You just like control, shift, select, and drag them all at once or? Exactly. So that's what I do is I'll just go through. So like, I know this was an entire shoot all out at the same location. I can just scroll to the bottom of this, grab that right there, and then drag those onto the map where they belong. Okay, and then after you do that, you still have to refine before hitting the green check mark, correct? I usually do just because I'm, I like to be as precise as I can, but I try not to be overly crazy right. with it just because I, my perfectionism can get out of control. You, you do you, and if you want to get super precise, you absolutely can. And if you <laughs> happen to know exact GPS coordinates, so let's say you took one picture at this particular location with your cell phone, you can grab those coordinates and then paste them into that places um, GPS coordinates field here. And GPS coordinates can be in a number of different formats. Does it need to be in that specific format or will it auto convert to that question. format? That's a great question. I am not sure about that. Okay. We have to learn a little bit more about that one. Um, the this other is a question- format that usually pops up from a cell phone. So if you, if you pull it from a cell phone, so if I go here to one with my, that was taken with my iPhone, that's the format that it's in. 
And so the, those are the coordinates that I would paste to everything else that I shot that day. Okay, so then the next question relates to searching. So let's say I drag and drop to some random place in Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. Can I then type Costa Rica in the search bar and it find it or it doesn't work that way, the search? So the easiest way to do that is gonna be here from the map view and to type in Costa Rica up here. Oh, That's okay. going to be your best results. But the main search, um, probably not. What searches up here is it does search some of the map um, characteristics, but it's not as precise as searching here directly in the map. Okay. And what this up here is searching is going to be pretty much everything that's here in your info panel. So it's going to search for your title, your caption, anything that's in the file name, your keywords, smart tags, categories, people, and just like I said, some to some location places. Um, the other thing you can do is um, use the quick filters, and this is a different way to narrow your results down. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, that it was just searching the metadata that's readily indexable, not necessarily converting the GPS coordinates to some sort of text-based uh, name that would then be included in a text-based search. So... Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, not super precisely, but it should have, I mean, it should grab the country and it, in a lot of cases it will even grab the city, but not 100% of the time. Gotcha. The main tip I got out of there was just go to the map and then search the map. Can you show me that one more time? Because at the bottom right, for example, where it says find location, that's for that one specific photo, right? So you just, it's over to the left. So you go to the left, go to the map, yeah. and then find location up there. Okay. Yeah. So let me do this. Let's type in... Like I said, it usually auto populates. And I think it's because I'm on Zoom. And it seems like every time I try to do a Zoom presentation with the map running, it doesn't want to search, but that would typically pull it up. Okay. And then we'll come out with a, <clears throat> a more zoom, zoomed out version. There. So I was already in the San Luis Obispo area, but it should auto populate here. So I think that's just a limitation of when I'm on Zoom. Great. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Any other questions? I don't see any more questions in chat. All right. Angela, Angela, can I just add? Sorry, it's Darren again. Um, you asked about applications that you use. I find, and I've put that in my um, blog, um, I find using Skyview Light um, oh, yeah. fantastic. Really, really fantastic. In my case, for looking for when Matariki is going to come above the horizon. Mm -hmm. um, because it has a tracking feature where it, you put in the cluster that you're looking for or the moon or whatever you and it shows you on your phone as you're tilting it all around it'll show you the trajectory and the and the time that it comes above the horizon and also when it predicts it's going to be i don't know what the measurement is but you know just up above it might be at um i don't know 10 past six in the morning or something so i can predict where i need to have my camera pointed and the direction and then i know it'll appear so um that's such a, and it's a free app and I think it's fantastic. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the one that so I use mostly for astrophotography is Planet and it's not a free app. It's not super expensive, but it is not free. And it does the same thing where you can, you can say, you, I want to get the core of the Milky Way and you can kind of track where it's going to come up and you can get this preview overlaid yes. on your landscape and you just can kind of tilt your phone around and find exactly where you want to be standing to see that come up. And it's, reasonably accurate you still might have to adjust you know a foot or two in one direction or the other when you're actually out there in the field but it gives you a very very close representation of where you should be to capture yeah. something like that so sky guide i'll have to check that one out another one okay. is, what was it called uh, sky view light is sky the one i'm talking to yeah okay. there is a sky view as well the paid version i think i tried both and the other one okay. free but sky view light was free and it works perfectly excellent yeah. Another one that I like is called Sky Guide, um, and it's not so much for the planning, but it does help you see when you're out at night, you can take the phone and you can just like move it up in front of your vision and move it around and see what constellations are out there at any given time. And that one's pretty neat too. That's more of just a for fun, not necessarily for planning your photography, but if you're in, if it, looking at the night sky is, is fun and interesting to you, you'll like that one. Yeah, I've used it too. It's great. Yeah, there's a few free ones and what have you that are fantastic. Thank you again. You're very welcome. All right. Are there any other questions? All right. Well, I guess that's it for today. I want to thank you all for joining me. I hope this was a fun and informative session for you. 
I would encourage you to come back next week and our, each week for our continuing coffee break series. We dive into small little things in the app that you can hopefully use to get more out of the program and enjoy your photos more and show you some different ways to use it that you might not have thought of. So with that, I want to wish you all a wonderful day. Have a great rest of the week and we will see you next time. Thank you, Lori, for your help. Thank you. Bye, right, everyone. Bye, everyone.